um, um, just finally here to do a tutorial uh, on basics of fume effects. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to kind of go through. I don't want to really plan anything here because, you know, there's really no uh, way to just plan a, a fire with fume effects. It's very, um, there's lots of settings and um, many things can change uh, the way your fire looks um, by object size and all that. So it's really hard to make tutorials for uh, fume effect, you know, on specific things. So what I'm going to do is just go through and play with all the like settings to create just a random fire, and maybe it'll, um, you know, help you figure out how to use it. Um, but let's just go ahead and create a random uh, thing here. I'm not going to go by settings because that, you know, the, like I said, you can't use. If I make a setting for a certain fire, unless everything's exactly the same size in the scene, it's not going to work for you. So, you know, like if you do a, like a cylinder and you light it up on fire and you love the fire, you put it on a piece of paper or something like that, a plane that's a different size, it's not going to work the same. You know, it's not going to be the same effect. So, you know, depending on the size, of course. So you got to be, you know, um, you gotta really know how to use the settings. So it, this will help you get started and learn what to tweak a little bit, and then you can, uh, you know, go from there. Well, you know, mainly the basic thing is to get the fire going and see the certain settings that you can tweak, and it'll it'll help you get going. Um, I'm not gonna work on smoke. I'm gonna keep smoke off when I do this, just because smoke is like a completely different tutorial because it involves shadows and all that stuff to get it to. Uh, look the way you want it to look. So that that'll be, I guess, the next tutorial. I'll, like create a fire here, and I guess I can save that project for you, and I'll continue it on to an another tutorial, adding fire or something. That might be the best way because this will it's going to be a long tutorial no matter what. Um, doing all these things, and maybe we'll just like keep the yeah. I guess we'll just do smoke and we'll go from there, and I'll do other fires and other tutorials. But there, there's so much you can do with fume effects. It's very, very hard to do it in a quick tutorial. So bear with me, and we'll just go on and uh, go from there. Okay. Anyways, uh, get Max started, uh, reset it, make sure everything's all reset, and go ahead into your geometry toolbar here. Drop down box, click fume effects, and click on the fume effects button and just pull out in the perspective viewport a fume effects container just get it a normal size here we'll go to the modifier panel now and we'll just make it you can make it any size i'm gonna well i'm not gonna say you can make it any size because basically i'm just showing you uh how to get it going so it's not like a tutorial on a specific thing that you're gonna want to do unless you like the fire but I'm just going to make it 80 by 80 in width length and um, make it like just a little bit taller so the fire can rise out a little bit. Because you got to make your container big enough to hold the fire and smoke when you do s your fire. Because if you don't, it'll get chopped off and you'll get those hard edges. So you got to try to imagine your fire that you want and make the container accordingly. Um, and try not to go too huge on it, because if you go huge, it's going to mean more memory and CPU power to render it. But, you know, try to keep your object scaled down to a nice max scene, maybe a, a, the standard max scene, like with the standard grid that you get. Try to keep it contained to this and just scale your objects down to fit, but not too small, um, uh, but just not too big either. So, you know, after you learn fume effects, you'll kind of understand what I mean by that. Uh, but just try to keep things scaled down at a decent size. Alright, so that's where we're going to go. We're going to go 80 by 80 by 130. And we'll leave spacing. We won't touch spacing right now. Because, you know, we'll render some fires and uh, show you what that's going to do. I don't want to change anything too much from default. Alright, and then we're going to go and go to the helpers panel, panel and drop down box to fume effects. We're going to just add a simple source in there. And just drag it out anywhere. Just make sure it winds up in the uh, fume effects container. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up just to make sure it's inside the container. Anything you do has to be, of course, inside the container. 
and it, you'd want it away from the edges. I mean, you don't really need this one away from the edges because it can form and shoot up just fine if it's in the middle here. You just won't get the bottom half rising out. I mean, we could try that, see how that looks. Um, just cut off the bottom part. We'll just render it from here. All right. So as long as you have the some part of the uh, object in here, then uh, it'll be fine. Okay, so we have that. Now what we need to do is tell Fume Effects to use a simple source object. And simple source is just a random uh, source. You can turn it into a cylinder, a box, and a sphere. Uh, change it from volume to solid. If it's a solid, it'll and solid and shell, it'll just flow from the outside. You only get little coming off like the surface. The volume fills up the sphere first and then shoots it out. I like to use the volume because it just, you know, it gives a better fluid out of it. Um, but it depends on your situation, of course. Alright, so let's just zoom extents and everything to get everything to fit. I'm going to go on my perspective viewport before we get started here. I'm going to just go ahead and turn on show safe frames just to make sure we're going to see what we get when we go to render. It'll give us an idea definitely of what's going to fit in the scene and of course for a pers I'm going to change my perspective give it a camera viewport so I'm going to go to views while I have my perspective viewport selected and I'm going to go to create camera from view and that gives me a camera then I'm going to go in any other viewport whatever and get my move tool and select the camera target and just p bring it and align it with the uh, Fume effects simple source just to get it. This is just for you know, so viewing purposes for the tutorial. But this is how I'm going to set up my camera just to make sure it fits and everything. And now, if I want to like rotate around my um, fire, I can just go simply like this in my camera viewport. It'll since I have my target locked on to my. Uh, uh, box, I can just rotate the camera around and it'll actually rotate around the fire or the fume effects box. So, okay, let me just get this moved into position. Let's get a little closer so we can actually see it. Uh, right there. Just grabbing my standard max tools just to move it. Alright, that should work. I just want to make sure it's lined up good. And like I said, I'm not going to add no lighting or smoke or anything crazy like that for this tutorial. This is just going to be fire now, just to get you started at how to light it up. All right, so now everything we got everything lined up. We got a camera, so we can examine it, for, you know, from different angles if we want. Uh, it just makes it easier. Okay, now let's we can maximize this viewport now. All right, now what we want to do is click on the Fume Effects container because in order to adjust its properties we have to actually highlight it and select it. So then go to your modifier panel up here and you'll have a little button here. You can click on that and it'll bring up the user interface for it. The okay, first thing you want to do is go to the general tab and for output path change it to a path that you know where it's going to go because it's going to create a whole bunch of files in here that could take up a lot of space and if you don't know where they are you, you know, you're going to be like where's all my hard drive space going? So that, this could add up. So I just create on my one of my junk drives a fume effects folder, and I always store them in that one. This way they'll overwrite each other all the time, and I won't have to deal with it. Basically, and you know you don't have to really do the file. The file is going to be automatic on that one, unless you want a specific file name for it, and you want to make sure it's saved your cache. So it just creates a whole during the simulation. It creates a whole bunch of files, so it can play it back quicker. All right. Make sure you know your output range, playback range, are according to whatever your timeline is going to be. So by the default, it's going to be 100. I'm going to set my viewport update to one. So when it's simulating, I just get to see the update. It doesn't affect rendering quality or anything. This is just going to uh, give me the viewport update while I simulate, just so I can see it better for the tutorial. Um, all right, and everything else is still default, just so you know. Now we're going to go to the object source panel and we're going to click on the little hand tool and click on simple source object. That adds the simple source to the fume effects container. 
Okay, so now the fume effects knows it's in there and it's going to automatically start generating fire from it. So what we'll do